Sponsored by Win-Win Technologies. Introducing the Orion F16EX POTAS. Also available as separate joystick and throttle sets. Or the stick and throttle grip components. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late January 2022 and it's very exciting because we've just been given access to the new voice chat in DCS or virtual radios is another way to think about it. So until this point, if you wanted to have any kind of lobby type voice chat in DCS, then you would have to use a third party app. You would use Discord, which is a perfectly good app. In fact, we're using it now to talk to my guys or TeamSpeak is another one and I'm sure there's others and then if you wanted to do some realistic radio communications in your aircraft and that links up to the actual radios in your cockpits you would have a third-party app like SRS simple radio standalone made by Siri Bob and again excellent app no complaints really good what they're doing now is they're taking that type of functionality and bringing it all in game the functionality is basically there now so we can start using it finally they've been building up in the background for months what's missing is all the kind of cool effects that make it sound like a radio and stuff like that but the core of it's in here so the things today we're going to cover are basic options control setup anything that has to be done in the background in windows dynamic radio options how to start the server that's compatible and then how to use voice chat in a multiplayer server First thing to say is that the voice chat in DCS is split into two halves. One side is the lobby or room type mode, that's like Discord, free chat or TeamSpeak. The second half is radio mode, and that's the side that's more like SRS, the realistic radio simulation. And we're going to look at both modes. Let's look at the basic setup options from main screen here. Options. We're going to go to audio. The items we're interested in are voice chat output voice chat input. I'm gonna assume your other things are already set up and you know working. Microphone app multiplayer start and voice chat. So first make sure obviously you've got your voice chat ticked. This just enables the system. Next voice chat output and obviously you just choose the element that you want to listen from. So for me it's gonna be communication speakers USB audio device as my headset. Same thing with voice chat input choose whichever one is yours and that one there is my headset. And finally microphone at multiplayer start. So when we start up voice chat, what is our default condition? Should it be push to talk, where you have the ability to talk, but you need to press a button to talk? Or should you be completely muted? You can change this afterwards. This is the default condition. Or activated, and you can speak at any time. I suggest push to talk. Yeah, just take my word for it. You will pee less people off if you go push to talk. I'm going to go OK to that. Next, I'm going to jump out into Windows because there's something that may help if any of you are experiencing problems. I'm going to go to the speaker down here in Windows. I'm going to go to Open Sound Settings. I'm going to go Sound Control Panel. I'm going to bring that over. I'm going to go to Communications. And this one here, the best thing to do is just have it on Do Nothing. Can you quickly explain why that might help Obi? Because, uh, yeah, Windows detects the, the voice chat as a as VoIP. As an audio call and we'll lower the volume on other things like discord skype background apps and it's it's just annoying because okay. everything else goes quiet yeah which is a bit silly isn't it so we're going to go do nothing and then do that right so that's that done next we're going to look at setting up our controls so from here again options controls there are two menus we're going to look at ui layer and radio voip let's start with ui layer first We've got just one command we want here. This is a voice chat push to talk with Mike. I should say at this point, because we're at an early stage of development, there's a good chance that the syntax of what that says there might change. So just be aware that it might say something slightly different to what you're seeing now. Anyway, this here is the push to talk. Push to talk is just a command you press with your finger and it allows you to talk while you're pressing it. Take your finger off and you'll no longer be able to talk. And this command here allows you to speak in the lobby or room mode, the first of the modes. And I've set it up as uh, that one there, joystick 11 button. Next, we're gonna go to, oh, don't forget to okay like that. And then go in and do the VOIP because it didn't save it for me last time. So where is it? Radio VOIP, okay. There are a few more commands to set up here, depending on how you plan to use this radio. So I plan to use it having two radios maximum per aircraft. I plan to use this radio in high fidelity aircraft like Hornets and F-14s and stuff like that. And I plan to use it in low fidelity aircraft. 
like F-15s, what we call Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft. They require a slightly different setup, so just bear that in mind. First, let's do the high fidelity radio setup. That's these four options here. Again, these names here will probably change. These are probably just development names and they will change in the future. Cockpit R1, 2, 3 and 4. These are the four possible radios that we can have in the high fidelity aircraft. So, Radio 1 in high fidelity aircraft. I'm going to go over to my wing with throttle here. I'm going to have my usual button I press in SRS to use Radio 1. And Radio 2, I'm going to have my, the button next to it there. There's a push to talks, by the way. PTT is push to talk. Next, I want to set up the same thing, but for the FC3 aircraft. And that covers things like the F-15, the flanker, uh, the frogfoot, things like that. Laid out again slightly differently at the moment. You've got R1 here. This is radio. R2, R3. R4 and you can have all the way down here to R9. Note that as well as just the PTT you have extra commands here in the Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft and that's because unlike the high fidelity you don't have the ability to press the knobs and turn the dials in the cockpit of a low fidelity aircraft therefore you will have to bind keyboard or HOTES commands to it if you want to do it whereas these ones, the high fidelity planes, you can go in and change all the knobs and you know interact with the header of the radio panel in the cockpit so that's why that's like that so for this radio one here radio one ptt i'm going to bind a, another command and what i've done is i've done a modifier so i've clicked on here and what i can't do and this is an annoying thing that i need to take up with the guys who are making it what you can't do is bind the same command as you bound here radio one which is what we really want you're going to have to bind something separate so the way i've done it to keep it as close as possible is i'll keep a finger on control press the radio one button and there I've got that command like that, okay? I'm gonna do a similar thing for radio two. I'm gonna do control and radio two button. So that's two radio set up in high fidelity, two set up in low fidelity, and finally an intercom. An example of an intercom that you might want to use is, let's say you're in an F-14 and you've got multi-crew and you want to talk to the other person via intercom in the aircraft, then this is where you'll come and do it. You can have two channels. I don't know why you'd have two, but anyway, uh, I've got one there and I've done it something different. Again, again, you can't use the same control so i've done left shift and radio one button so at the end of that we've got six bindings done one for the lobby mode push to talk one for the intercom push to talk high fidelity two for the high fidelity two possible radios and two for the fc3 two possible radios okay saved next dynamic radio options uh, if we go to options here misc here dynamic radio here and here we can access any of the modules in DCS so for instance it defaults to 810A it gives us here the currently integrated radios these are the, just the hard-coded radios in the aeroplane an ARC 164 and a couple of ARC 186s if you click on one of them you can see all the stuff you need to know about the radio there you can't edit it because it's hard-coded we can add one in which is a really interesting bit let me show you why we might want to do that so I'm just going to pick a warbird here because they're notoriously bad radios. So P47, all it's got is an SCR522A, uh, which is, the modern times, it's pretty terrible. It only has a tiny frequency range in the VHF of 100 to 156 megahertz. What if I want to speak to my friend in a multiplayer server who's in an F5 Tiger that can maybe only do UHF, for instance, uh, 225 to 400 well i can't it's not possible well because in dcs we need to be able to do that we have the ability to add unrealistic but useful radio so i can create a new radio here i wouldn't suggest that unless you really know what you're doing but we can add an existing radio and that's the best way of doing it so i went here and i want to find a good radio a good model radio like an arc 210 that's something you get in a hornet that covers a massive frequency band let's do that add uh, existing radio and you can see we've now got the ARC 210. Look at that massive range, 30 megahertz FM all the way up to the top of UHF, 400. That will cover basically anything you need. So we've now got a P47 that has an extra radio, the ARC 210, so I can talk to anyone. So let's go OK to save that, and that will just be saved in some weird magic way in the background. So the next thing to do is to start a multiplayer server. So I'm going to do one of those. It's going to be a non-dedicated multiplayer server. I'm going to go to multiplayer. I'm going to go to start server. Here is my options and stuff that I can do. I've already made a mission for this uh, that have some aeroplanes in it. I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to make sure that allow voice chat is on. Without that, obviously, voice chat doesn't work. And you know how we added in that extra radio for the P47? It's unrealistic, but that useful radio. Will we allow that? Or will we want to keep it fully milsim so that you can only use the radios in the plane? You can do that as well, which is, again, it's a great function that we can have there, depending on the realism that you want. 
Okay, um, I'm going to start this and I'm going to get some of my buddies in and we're going to show you um, how to get it all rolling. So I'm going to just start in Hornet because we keep it super simple. I'm going to go in there. First thing we're going to do is bring up the voice chat system and we do that with show voice chat window, left control, left shift and tab or change it to whatever you want. Ping, that is our basic system there and you can drag it about if you want. There are also visibility options that you can do here if you want to change the visibility and you can see my uh, inputs volume and my microphone testing there. First thing to show is you can switch between the two modes. Default, it's lobby mode, or room mode. Or if you don't want that, you can go into radio mode, which is the realistic mode when we're going to use the radios of the aircraft like that. That's radio mode. Let's go back to lobby mode. By default, there will be these rooms in here. There will be common and there will be coalition blue because there are some coalition blue people in me, Simba and whoever else is about to turn up. Note that we're in both rooms. Well, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Because you can't be in two rooms at once. What that actually means is because it's gray here, I have access to this room here. But it's white here, which means that I'm actually in this room here and I can actually speak in this room here. Now, why don't I go and create a new room just to help explain that a bit better. Add a new room. Uh, yep, my room, that's fine. I'm going to open that up. I'm allowed in there. I'm not in there at the moment. I also want Simba to be allowed in there. So I'm going to add user. Uh, OK, Simba, you can come in if you want. And I'll even let Obi come in for a little bit. OK, guys, let's shift over to that room. I'm going to click on that room there. I'm now here, Simba's now here, and Obi's here. Note how I could allow them to come in, give them access to this room, but I couldn't actually bring them in. They're only brought in when they become white like that, and they can only do that themselves. Note that I can remove them from the room there, I can mess around with their, uh, you know, mute them if they're getting on my nerves, which they do a lot there. And we've got some very basic options there, because volume will need configuring quite a lot. Some will be loud, some will be quiet, and you'll have to go mess around like that just like you have to do in uh, discord and stuff like that because everyone has a different mic now we can now use if you remember that button there to uh, actually talk in this uh, room here so what i'm going to do guys is i'm going to go off discord and i'm going to talk to you through the lobby okay i'm now off discord i'm going to press and hold that button that we looked at hello guys can you hear me note it goes green when you're talking yep reading your five by five there cap Okay, Obi I can hear, Simba I can't, and that's because he can't get his mic working, thought we got it working, and we couldn't. And that is pretty much all we need to know there. Okay guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through to radio, and I'm going to get myself on uh, 256 megahertz AM, and I'll see you there in a couple of minutes. We're going to go through radio mode now. I should say as well that if we're in radio mode here, we can't talk to lobby mode. That's a completely separate entity. Lobby mode is purely for just chatting and chilling and organising. Radio mode is the realistic one for the actual mission. When we're in radio mode, we have the uh, integrated radios that we've got, including any that you've added yourself that we talked about. And of course, it has two ARC 210s, COM1 and COM2 in this here. Note that the uh, options like the frequency, the preset your channel, the encryption, the guard, the uh, modulation are greyed out and I can't change them. That's because they're now linked to this actual radio here on the UFC. So if I want to change them, I have to change them in the cockpit. That's all about the realism, okay? Well, let's go and change that, shall we? So in the cockpit here, I'm going to put that to manual. There we go, manual. All right, clear it. Uh, what did I say, 256, I think? Whoops, wrong. 256, one, two, three, enter. Now 256, I'm going to try talking now with that one there. High fidelity radio one PTT. This will go red when I'm talking. It will go green when receiving. Okay, cap checking uh, on 256. Five by five, Simba. Yeah, Obi's got your five by five too. So that's the radios in the radio mode. There's also intercom here. I haven't got an intercom on this plane, but that's how we'd use that. Okay, guys, you stay there. I'm going to quickly jump into a warbird and see if I can still talk to you. Stand by. So let's go and do that. Um, this is actually untested at this point, so... Uh, Okay, in our beloved uh, jug, let me turn on the thingy again, there we go. Uh, I'm going to go over to radio mode, and, and, there it is, there's our radio that we added. I'm going to try typing in there, because it's an added radio, not a realistic one, you can just, you know, type in. So 256.000. Now to actually transmit, because it's an added unrealistic radio, we're not going to use the high fidelity PTT, we're going to use the low fidelity PTT. It's going to be this one that we're going to use the low fidelity 
radio one, PTT. So for me, that's left control and joy six. So let me try pressing that and see if it works. Left control and joy six. Com check, two, five, six from my jug. You're reading your loud and yeah. clear on two, five, six. Yeah, baby, it's working. I'll see you back in Discord. So, guys, uh, if you can hear me in Discord, what we did there was we jumped in a warbird that's not meant to have a modern radio. We've added a modern radio unrealistically. We've used the unrealistic FC3 PTT bind to operate it, and it's worked. It's contacted you guys. So that is the basic operation of radios in the new system, along with the lobby slash room mode. We haven't got the realism in there yet have you obi it's really just uh, the basic functionality of it and i think line of sight's working yeah line of sight's working and all the transmitter powers and uh, and you know transmission mm -hmm. strength and things like that but there's there's mo lots more of the um, additional features to come like um, blips and bops that radio make like ptt click squelch things like that additional effects will come up in uh, future updates just uh, to remember, that with the extra radios, the servers can force them to be off. So, um, you know, if, if a server wants you to remain true to the aircraft, then they, they can be forced off. So sometimes they won't show, and that's probably why if you're an MP. Would you ever be able to check a server out to see if it's got that option set or not? Or are you just going to have to go in and, and try it? We'll maybe do something in the future for that. We're going to probably add indication to show if a server has the voice chat feature turned on completely just because that'd be useful for people to know before they go in if if the native voice chats up and running on that server but maybe in the future it might come up in the options that you can see on the um on the multiplayer lobby screen where you can see the mission options right thank you very much obi and simba and um, i hope that was useful go out and try it and see how far you get and we'll see you later